One of the things that must make your work difficult is the fact that you are performing before audiences. Oftentimes, alcoholic beverages have been or are being served. Has it ever happened that somebody gets out of line while you're on stage? Constantly. It was always under the table when I was singing. <laughs> I didn't serve it in front of people. Uh, but I mean, did audiences ever get rowdy where they'd have to have a bouncer come in? Oh, or yes. Anything I like that? I hear about it all the time, but no, we I don't never, seem to have that problem. We, we never had clubs. a bouncer mm -hmm. at the Waldorf. We had trouble Oscar with Jack. Oscar wouldn't allow it. <laughs> we had trouble with Jack Oakey when he'd get a little loaded getting him off the bandstand. <laughs> Oh, Lord, you mean old Jack old Jack oh, used Jack, to he'd stand up there directing the band like oh, mad, and oh. finally each fellow would walk off one at a time and leave him up there <laughs> by, by himself. <laughs> when you he, were with the uh, with the uh, Rhythm Boys and uh -huh. uh, at the Grove here, uh, didn't Cr Crosby not come to work once in a while? Yes, dear. That's the reason I went in the Grove. <laughs> yeah, tell that story. They decided. Well, they were having trouble with the Rhythm Boys and. Uh, Nelson uh, Case, probably you've heard of Nelson. Mm -hmm. He was the announcer there at that time, and I was. I am so glad you mentioned that name him. because he used to work for the Circle Theater That's back in the right. 50s, and he'd say, "Good evening for the Armstrong Cork Company. Yes. My name is Nelson Case." People say, "Who's he? He's a great but announcer." He's a great guy. And he announced at the Grove, and he heard me. He says, "Well, they're having trouble with the Rhythm Boys, and Bing's not showing up half the time, mm -hmm. and and uh, there's a girl singing at KFWB, and." And uh, they said, listen in to her. And they said, oh, I'm not, we don't want a girl at the Grove. What are you going to do with the girl? The girl never sings with bands. So anyway, Nelson is the one that introduced me over there. And they sent uh, Arthur Freed over after me. And he's a limousine. And I'm strictly from Glendale. And I have a job at KFWB making 50 bucks a week. I thought I was really doing great. <laughs> so anyway, Arthur took me over there. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, sang, I sang I Surrender, Dear for him and I had never met Harry then. I'd never been in the Coconut Grove, strictly. So anyway, they said, well, let's try her out. So I tried out and I made it. And first he said, uh, Arthur says, now ask. I says, what'll I ask for? I haven't the slightest <laughs> idea. He says, ask for 150. I says, you're out of your mind. <laughs> They'll never <laughs> take me. I can't stand it. He says, ask for 150. And so shakingly I did and I got it. And the Rhythm Boys, Bing was making on 125 at that time with wow. the Rhythm Boys. Asking you shall receive. And I got it. <laughs> you were probably prepared to pay 300 you know. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I was willing to have walked in there for nothing. <laughs> right. God. Do we know why it was that uh, Bing wasn't coming to work? Well, there's, that's a long story. A lot of it you can't even <laughs> talk about. Well, why not? Well, it's well, quarter or two in the morning. Who's up? Oh, well, they were, Bing, water. They, they, were <laughs> they were good drinkers in those days. Uh -huh. And Bing would come in with blue, one blue sock and one green. He one. was colorblind. <laughs> color oh, he was completely Just colorblind. Completely colorblind. Yeah. But he was cute as heck. And oh, on certain yeah. days, he loved his yeah. chocolate ice cream. And so the first night I worked, Harry... Uh, whom I later married, had just gone to Denver to visit his mother. So <clears throat> Bing walked out on stage with me the first night. I was shaking like a leaf. I didn't know what hand to use or what to do. <laughs> so he got out and he sang, He'll Never Remember, Were You Sincere, was a song. But uh, he was very sweet. But shortly after that, there was, uh, well, we used to have the uh, Saturday afternoon tea dansons there. And I didn't... Saturday afternoon which? Tea dance on, they oh. call it. They drink tea and dance. Yes, and a lot of booze, too. So anyway, <laughs> oh my! I don't speak uh, pig Latin, but they tell us do, did, rather. And, and I heard them uh, talking, and I understood it. And it, it says, we're walking today. And I had been up with them about... Your way, walking way, huh? We're walking e out. E and that's way, when they walking walked way. out of the grove and being, the, had a terrible time with the union. And finally, oh, they paid off the big price for him, and that's when he went mm -hmm. to New York and became famous. And Harry came back and worked his contract out, and that's why we, where we met and got married. <laughs> but we used to sing like singing a lot of numbers. They'd give us mm -hmm. like six and seven numbers to do a night. New all these publishers coming in with songs, and I talk about making up lyrics. <laughs> I was the best lyric writer you ever knew <laughs> but moment. that's the way they did and people at that time the most beautiful thing about the grove they stood in front of you when you sang and just swayed to the music 
didn't move when you were singing. This is what happened with Cougat at the Waldorf. He was so classy. He really was. I loved and Cougat. And you'd see like Kate, like uh, uh, Joan Crawford's and all mm. of them would stand at the stand mm. and sing a uh -huh. couple of courses with the band. And it was, mm. it was a house full of stars. Did that tighten you up a little bit if you're performing in front of uh, uh, big big stars? Tightened oh, me surely. up plenty because I never saw so many stars person. in my life as I saw yeah. at the Grove in those days. I mean, you know, it's funny, popular. but when I was a kid, I used to think I'd hear all the remote <coughs> broadcasts from the Coconut Grove. The two-hour mm -hmm. broadcast oh, upstairs. Marvelous. And I always thought it was like being in Honolulu. Yeah. I'll never forget the first time I saw it. I kept looking. I was in the middle of it and kept looking <laughs> for it. I was looking for the coconut grove. <laughs> but it was upstairs they did that oh, in a was, separate room. And that I was so disappointed. <laughs> I hate to think oh, that those rooms I, I was waiting for the water. Oh, the water. Yeah. I love the Waldorf. I absolutely adore the Waldorf. Listen, the commercials come too fast here. I, I hear the song this time. We have uh, uh, Lois Whiteman's song, uh, there ought to be a moonlight saving time. And they time. were pretty they corny were then. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here is what it sounds like. We'll be right back after I these I sounded like Betty Swoop in those days. <laughs> <laughs> And you were backed up by a band. You, you didn't go on the road and all that stuff. It was no, different. Was, How was it different? Well, I was going to school here, and Johnny Mercer, who wrote many songs with my father and heard me sing when I was nine and encouraged me, started Capitol Records. And he said, I'd like you to be one of the first singers. But he signed me. But the first record I really made was uh, my ideal uh, song of my father's with Billy Butterfield. But they brought out Black Magic because uh, he had written it with Harold Arlen and they didn't like the record they had. So I did that with Ella Mae was pregnant. So they said, can you sing this song? And I did. But uh, when I did my ideal and I did Moonlight in Vermont, they had Les Brown's band. It was in town. They were playing the Palladium. So they brought that band over and let Billy Butterfield front it. Then I worked with Paul Weston and Frank Duvall and Nelson Riddle. But I really got a feeling of what it was like, what the girls must have gone through when they traveled with bands just two, three years ago, when they started a package, when nostalgia started getting so big again, mm -hmm. called the Big Band Cavalcade. Freddie Martin got the band, and we're all guys from here, top studio men. Bob Crosby brought some of his Dixieland people, his musicians. We had George Shearing one time, we had Frankie Carl, and we went out in a bus, and we'd go for three months, <laughs> And uh, every day was another city, and we played, uh, we did one show at the Palladium, and we did one downtown at the big theater, mm -hmm. and um, it was marvelous because you had a great band, people that I'd grown up with around here had played a lot of my record dates, but I went out really as a star, you know, I, I, I didn't serve my apprentice. It's the only way to go. That you're you're going out there, you're go star. out there as a right. star. Oh, listen, because... <laughs> I mean, I can imagine what it was like before, but, you know, 7 o'clock in the morning, you get up, pack your bags, get out of the motel or hotel, get on the bus, and you sit there all day. And, and the same people, you know, there were 22 men and myself. We call it 22 men, a Greyhound bus, and what a crazy way to live, or what a crazy way to go. But mm -hmm. it was a marvelous experience. It showed me all of the country and what I had missed. As a kid, when I started singing, I could have learned so much from that every night working well, with the band. Well, now, when, when, when you realize what you had missed, were you glad that you'd missed it? Missed it? <laughs> yes. If that was the way you had to go, I was glad I just grew up here. <laughs> Margaret had an interesting idea during the commercial. She said, are you going to do a show with the great band leaders? Yes. Who should we have on that show if we do band leaders? Well, you should have Charlie Barnett. You should have Bill Basie. I and mean, you should have Xavier Cougat. All right, that's three. We need All right, six. Let's see. Definitely. Um, how about? Um, uh, let me see. Um, Les oh, Woody Brown. Herman. Woody Herman. Gotta have Woody Herman. Artie Show. Artie Show. Very articulate. Freddie no, Freddie no, Swank. He, he gone. Died. He, died. Uh, he uh, left yeah, us. He yeah, Freddie Martin, Bob Crosby. Sure. Uh, um, Frankie Carl would be wonderful. Okay, oh, Frankie that's enough. Carl oh, great. So yeah. Yeah. That's enough. We don't want any more. That's enough.
He was Marlon. Listen, do you do you guys get together every once in a while and just shoot the breeze, or uh... we don't get a chance? No, but you we know. did last year. Oh, well, let me tell you. Yeah, oh, I have to tell you this. The Pacific, I knew you would. Pacific Pioneer <laughs> here, Broadcast, of which it, I am a member. Here and it comes. This is a plug. I must chewy, tell you. Chewy. I really must tell you this. I belong to one of the great groups in town. Really, Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters are all the people in television and radio that have been active 15 years or more. And they, we are, I guess, 1,800 at present. And every two months out of the year, we celebrate or honor a special person, a director, a writer, a comedian, a singer, or whatever. They took Forgive. care of all of us. Forgive and then me, I, I came got 30 up, seconds left, so you, keep I, going. I, I, keep I came going. up with the idea of the girl singers. And then we had the girl singers, and let me tell you, it was such a success that this is why we're here tonight, I'm sure, Tom. And they gave us the And this was the little trophy <laughs> we all got. They gave us the bird. The they little bird. The, bird. One the canary. The bird. <laughs> Isn't that neat? Listen, I have to thank you all oh. for being here tonight. We and uh, we're going to do the band leader sometime. When we you come should. back, when we come back next year, whenever it is, we'll get you back in here, and we'll do some songs next time. Now, the last number we're going to play tonight is Margaret Whiting's My Ideal. Thank oh. you all for being here and continued Thank success you. and happiness and Happy Such New Year to Happy each and every New one. Year to you. All right. Thank here you is so Margaret Whiting and My Ideal. He's a dream 